Alright, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're starting a series where we're going to be making a game, uh, pardon me, in Unity using C Sharp. It will be a five part series. I've actually already recorded it. This is the final result. So this is what we'll be making. Um, please follow along. Hopefully you learn a bit. Let me know uh, if you have any issues. Please comment straight away below. I will know, obviously, uh, hopefully, what your issue is. And yeah, I did go quite quick in this series as well as I have a few mistakes that I catch basically back on straight away. So if you do have a bit of an issue, um, let me know. But this is the game. I'll quickly go ahead and show you. It's very simple. It's called Red and Green. Go ahead and click play. The, yeah, the concept is you got to flop the thing around. Oh, I'll try again. And make it so you get on the right squares. So you collect the right ones as you can probably see. And you got to kind of pre-fire it a little bit. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's another high scoring game. And if you get the wrong color, then um, then it's GG, no re. But we'll go ahead and keep going. We'll go ahead and die. Oh, there we go, die. As you see, we've got a high score of 22, and the score is 13, what we just got then. So yeah, that's the simple concept. Click escape. Boom. So yeah, guys, let's get right into it. Good luck, have fun. Uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Alright, what is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be making a series on making a game on Unity. So if you'd like to learn how to make a game on Unity, then this is the spot. You don't have to have any knowledge in coding or programming or anything like that. We'll go ahead and start from scratch. This is just uh, what the game is going to be kind of like, um, what the concept is. There's nothing, I haven't added anything. This is simply all it does. Um, but I'll sh this is just like a concept. We'll start from scratch, so don't worry, I'm just uh, showing you. Hopefully it doesn't work. It's uh, Yeah, so... Something like this, as you can probably tell. But that's not how we're going to do it. We'll go ahead and get out of that. You want to make up a... Oh, sorry. You want to make a um, a Unity document. I actually just made one because my thing decided to crap itself. How do you actually load... Uh, no, whatever. We'll go ahead and just open up Unity. We'll do it that way. You need to have a, a scene, and I don't have a scene on that one yet. So just make a Unity document. You want it to be in 3D. Uh, Unity is free uh, if you're not buying the professional version. So yeah, you can go ahead and open up it. We call that this one it rotated, if you'd like to call it that too. Um, this is straight nothing on it. It's 3D, and we're going to start it for PC, but it can be like you can make this, and once you're finished, you can export it for Android, iPhone, whatever. I'm not going to add anything special. Um, for it because all it's going to be doing is clicking a button and yeah so what it's going to happen is we're going to make it so the ground switches over so it flips upside down and one side will be white one side will be green and all these little characters will fall down different colors so you've got to make sure you you um so if white's coming down you want to flip it to white and then if green's coming down you want to flip it to green and like every time a white one hits the white panel you get a point and if like a green one hits the white panel it's like game over or whatever high screen game you know me i make a lot of high screen games well i made two but anyway that's what we're going to be doing so I think to start off with, we'll go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and just make a, a cube because we're not going to actually use train or anything here. Uh, we're just going to use a cube. Might as well just add some. Uh, you might want to add a directional light. Just chuck it in just to make it look, you know, somewhat decent. But this is the cube. This is what we'll have for the floor. So if you want to make it look like, so because you, you probably can't really tell, you want to just change the uh, main camera to what is it again? Perspective. So then you can actually like rotate it and move it up. So it actually looks like uh, that's the cube. So we'll go ahead and change the cube to about 10 by 10. So 10 by 1 by 10. About that. Yeah. So just put it in there if you want. Um, yeah, about like that. So we'll go ahead and move the camera up a bit just so we can see a bit better. So yeah. So that's the that's one side of the uh, of the floor. So this, we can you can call it um, floor green if you want, and we'll go ahead. That's fine, enter that. So you can call this one floor green. And we can go ahead and go down here and create. Uh, this is how mine's laid out. You can lay out yours the same if you'd like. Um, so this is a project, console, inspector, hierarchy there, and then my uh, game and then my scene here. So we go ahead and create a folder. I'm just call it materials. You want to you wanna try and make it as neat as possible. And we can create another folder, call it scripts. Um, scripts and then we can create another folder and call it scenes scenes doesn't really matter you don't have to do them yet but i just do it just to, just because i can and then in the uh, materials folder we'll go ahead and create a material so boom material so here is uh, basically a color or a material obviously if you want to add like a texture to it and stuff like that you wouldn't really do it to material though but here is where you can make yourself a color so we'll go ahead and make this color green and just drag it onto your floor so this is now floor green 
you can go ahead and copy this floor so just go control C control V and we'll call this one floor red and we'll go ahead and create a new material. You don't have to name these materials. I don't usually name them, but you can if you want to make it a little bit more neater. And we'll go ahead and make this floor red. Now you want to get the floor and just drag it. Actually, you can hold V and um, and get the corners and actually just drag it down first and then like pull it up and click V and then grab the square and then pull it up and it kind of like locks it in. So now it's perfectly and you just want to drag that color there. So now you can see the floors are like perfectly like a sandwich, but nothing in between those in the in between the crusts but yeah that's you got floor red and you got floor green so yeah done no i'm just kidding so now we've got our two floors so that's something right that's something we haven't actually done any coding or anything like that but we've done something so what we want to do most likely is the animation first to actually get it going like the flipping part because we kind of want that you can actually do this quite simple so we'll go ahead and go back to our assets and create a quick um, folder and just call it an animation even though it's not even going to be an animation what we're doing because we'll do it in a bit of a different way that I learned the other day so we can go ahead and go to floor green and floor red well, actually we'll go ahead and create an empty game object here so just right click here and go create empty and we'll name this game object floor uh, floor so we'll go ahead and drag green and floor floor green floor red into that floor a game object so now this consists of both so if I move this it moves them both just kind of like a parenting type of thing um, so yeah that's done now you want to do is go over to animation to get animation up I think it's just window animation boom animation you got window and you got animation up so make sure you're on floor or alrighty so we'll try this again hopefully I cut that other part out um, we'll go ahead and call this floor anim1 so this is where we make an animation and we'll just go ahead and add properties, add transform, add rotation. So now that should be all G. That should be what it does. So that's all we need. Uh, and now what I want to do is create a new clip and call it floor and M2. And here we go ahead and add property transform rotation. And we go to this little tool up here, up here and go rotate this, we rotate it minus 180 hopefully that's about right um, so now it's gonna do a weird thing so if we delete that should be should be good should be good uh, 180 or minus 180 good so that's in the animation right okay so now if we click play it's gonna be normal okay cool finally oh, that's fine so now what we want to do is go to this little thing up here called animator if you don't have it just go window uh, is it window no it's it's in a weird spot to get the animator up. Uh, project settings. How do you get the animator up again? Um, I don't. Oh, there it is. My bad. Derp. Yeah. So, window, animator. My bad. Uh, I was. Why don't they have an next animation? That'd be too smart. So here we've got. Full animation one, full animation two, but right now full animation one is just normal and then full animation two is just the opposite. So it's like, eh, it's kind of kind of stupid. But what we want to do is add a little uh, make transition to full animation two. And in this transition, you want to go to up here and go this little plus sign here. So this is a trigger and call it new trigger. I assume this is the trigger, right? <laughs> add behavior. Hmm. Parameters. This, oh wait no maybe this is ah my bad yeah fuck that one off I don't even know what that does oh I know what that does that's a new whole animation state yeah don't worry about that we can <laughs> my bad didn't mean to make that you can fuck off I just how do you delete it whatever so you go to parameters and here you go trigger and then go new trigger uh, we'll go ahead, we'll call it my trigger trigger my trigger so we'll go back to base layer so here we got my trigger so you click on the transition thing here and go to the conditions and go add and now it so adds my trigger and now that's that's what we want it's good it's good it's good now you go settings and you go transition duration 0.1 go 0.75 so this should make a little transition thing so now we want to obviously make a transition back as well so go make transition and send it back to that one and click on that transition go again uh, add my trigger and make this 75 and do you have to untick this has exit time I'm not sure but uh, that should hopefully do it obviously it's not gonna do it now because it's it's got nothing to trigger it 
So what we want to do is make a quick script to make it so that when you click a button, it uh, does that little loop. So I'll be right back, folks. Alrighty, so what you want to do is right click here and go create C sharp script and call it um, rotate. That's what it's going to be called. Yay. Um, now, if you use Melody Developer, Melody Develop or Visual Studio, it doesn't really matter. I use Visual Studio because I like it a little bit better. Uh, it's, no, wait, what did I say? I use Visual no, I use Mono Develop, my bad. But I do I use Visual Studio as uh, AIE, but uh, I like Mono Develop here a bit better, um, to be honest. I don't know, it's just, likes, it looks nicer. So, what you want to do is add a public string. Oops. Public string and call it my trigger. It doesn't really matter what you call this, actually. My trigger, we'll go ahead and call it that. And we'll make a public, public void on click. So it's a public void, meaning it's a, a function, because a void is a function, if you know what that is, um, which allows us to basically do a, th a certain bit of code. And on this case, we've called it on click, doesn't really matter what you call it, where when we click, which will set, so when we click a button, it will do the following code that is in these curly braces right here. So, and, to make, and the reason why it's public, it means that we'll be able to access it from a button uh, or from anything else. And here is a public string, which just is a, um, it gets uh, my trigger. Yeah, that's something else you don't really need to worry about. But we need that right now to access my trigger. And then here we do a simple line of code, get component, because what that does, it gets the component of the button, which it will, no, actually we'll get the component of, you yeah, know, that's right. It gets the component of the button. Well, not the button, the animator, which will be on the, uh, which will be on the, I'm thinking, do I want it on the uh, landscape or do I want the button? I think we'll have it on the, probably the landscape. Uh, yeah, most likely that. So the floor was what I'm trying to say. And then you go the curly braces because we don't, we're not getting any parameters. Then go set trigger, which is the trigger that we're setting it to. And then my trigger. So my trigger is the string up there, which will then, we will then put in my trigger. Um, so yeah, go ahead and save that. That's all we really need right now. So we can minimize that and we can go to, I think we'll put on the floor. Hmm. But then will it work on click? Should do. So that should be fine. And then here you just go my trigger or whatever you call that trigger. You should have probably called it my trigger. Uh, did that save? Yep. And now we want to create a canvas. So you go right click here and go UI create canvas. So now we've got a canvas and then we'll put that out of the floor. We don't want that in the floor. Um, and we want to, we'll just put it up here for now. We'll call it, and we want it, sorry, we want to add a, uh, what are we adding? A button. We want to add a button. So now we've got a nice little a button. And here we'll just, in the text of it, we'll just write rotate. Oh, rotate, doesn't really matter. We'll just move the button down. Uh, as you can see, this is the canvas here. If you want to actually get closer to the button, you just click F and it will uh, get you to the button. So we'll just go ahead and drag it in the corner over here. And there's axes up here. So depending on what like you're using. So basically it locks in the, this position. So we'll go bottom right, which means like no matter what device you're using, it's going to find it from the bottom right. So we'll put it here on any device. Like whether the device is 400 meters wide, like the screen or one meter wide, it's always going to put it in this corner part here if you know what I mean. But anyway, that's good. That's what we needed. Now, um, depending if this works or not, this is, could be a, a bit of an iffy thing here. We'll go ahead and go to the button, click this little plus sign here on, on click, and we'll drag the floor in there and go rotate on click. Now, hmm, hopefully that works. I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna work. Might have to do a bit of testing. As, as program, there's always some errors and some bugs, and that unfortunately is how life works. <laughs> Especially program, if we click rotate, yeah, yeah. Look at that, boys. It's working nice and well. So obviously it's not working. I'm guessing that's because I've not set something up properly, obviously. Uh, so I'll quickly take a quick look, see what I've done wrong, and then we'll fix it. Won't take long. Alrighty, we fixed the issue. Uh, I just, the animation didn't work when I tried animating the um, animation too. It didn't work, so it's fixed now. So now it looks like that. So now when you click play, uh, rotate, boom, look at that, the uh, the floor rotates. So that's the uh, that's what we wanted. It's very simple to do that. Um, yeah, we've got it, so now the floor rotates. So that's step one of our little game. So basically what we're gonna try and do, we'll just go ahead and move the camera back so you can kind of take a little bit of an understanding of the concept of the game, is where little things will fall. It will probably be more of a, actually a side on view more like this, I reckon. Oh, where's the camera gone? Probably more a bit like that. 
uh, I don't know how big the, the platform will be, but like a sudden view like that and we'll click rotate and it will like rotate so like things will drop. Maybe we can even make it so you have to control it left to right. I don't know. Very simple game. Um, that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's the that's the whole concept of it. Next, we'll probably work on... I don't know. We, we, honestly, we don't have a... This won't be a very long game. Probably only a couple of episodes. So we'll make it so the enemies fall, maybe. Or the people fall, the characters fall. And then when they get hit, you get a score. High scores, save the scores, save your high score and menu. And yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you are learning anything. Thanks, guys. How far to go? Everybody got the reason. Everybody got the way. We're just catching and releasing. What builds up?